Okay guys, how are you? Welcome back. It's been a while, huh? First thing first, I came up with a new food metaphor for tennis. It's quite an innovation, I'm actually very proud of it. So you know how 6-0 score is a bagel and 6-1 is a baguette or some call breadstick. I'm gonna go with baguette for the, the alliteration it provides. And I've been trying to come up with a term for 6-2 games for a month. People beat me double break all the time. I don't know how to describe it. It's just a, you know, a strange je ne sais quoi sensation I'm trying to put into words. So I asked my best friend, ChatGPT, who has always been there for me, by the way, and it doesn't know shit. It keeps saying a croissant or a cream torn looks like number two at a certain angle. What kind of hippie ass answer is that? Nothing looks like number two. If you would just open up your mind, looking at at a different perspective, anything is the answer you're looking for. No. And then it occurred to me, I do need to broaden my horizon, jailbreak from this mind lock I impose on myself. I realize Youtiao is the pastry that can stand for 6-2 games because Youtiao always comes in pairs and that resembles the shape of a uh, Roman number 2. For those of you who never had Youtiao before, this is the way it looks like. So yeah, um, next time somebody beat you or you beat someone 6-2, you can just say, oh, I got a, I got a Youtiao from someone. That's, <laughs> that's what it is. The bakery is operational and it sells three items only. Bagel, baguette, and Youtiao. Actually, if I think about it, if you get a 6-3 game, you can say you get a palmier. Because the, the contour of a palmier kind of looks like the number three. But I think it's going too far. I have milk the joke too far and it has gone stale anyway I've been slacking and didn't upload much <laughs> actually I have been playing regularly but didn't post anything here and I have two very good reasons first sub-optimal setup I have been going over these clips and I notice it's a little difficult to see where the ball is in some of these clips. Some of you watch my video on TV and have commented on my garbage video quality. That has made me very, very self-conscious. In the beginning, I was recording 720p and now I film in 1080p full HD as much as I can. But if you photograph or record anything, you would know pixel isn't everything. The quality still varies, depends on which camera lens I use. If I use wide angle and film matches at night, usually it's somewhat blurry. I don't like to post them because standards. However, what I lack in production value, I make it up with the caliber of my opponents. I have three matches in this video. All three of my opponents, I say, are pretty high level, around 4-5 NTRP. So please sit back, squint, and enjoy the peak entertainment I'm about to provide. Oh, and the second reason, previously I said I will fix my forehand and I would drop down in weight so I can move better on court. Neither of those has happened yet. I fixed my forehand somewhat, like 2 or 3 shot out of 10, I can create enough space between me and the ball and, and hit it cleanly. And for losing weight, I have added more strength training to my workout. Um, usually I respond to that pretty well, get a metabolism boost and, and I would lose some weight from that, even with questionable diet. However, as much as I like to think I'm on the right track, I don't have anything to show on the video yet. Proof or it didn't happen. This whole tennis channel filming my matches thing began with the idea that if I film myself, I will get a better look at myself, truer feedback 
on my technique and maybe I can improve faster. My coach seems to think I'm a better player than I am actually in matches like everyone else. Either I am just playing so much better in training or my coach is just too nice of a guy. So I started to send him my match play videos. I could just film and watch them privately or share them privately with my coach but it is easier to share a YouTube video than a janky swing vision link and I also do strongly believe there are some values in this public learning process. Maybe if I gather my thought and talk about it after each match I can articulate my learning and maybe that becomes notes for me to review in the future or it helps me to improve the tactical strategy part of my game. So after what eight months of filming and recording and posting videos um, I'm kind of hitting this plateau where I'm not improving as fast as before. So for purely selfish reasons I don't see the point of posting another video where I'm not making really any progress in my tennis game. It's like wake up in the morning, look into the mirror twice. There's no point, it's the same guy in there. However, I think the whole process is still worth it. Throughout this a month of filming my tennis match, I learned a lot about myself that I didn't know before. It's, it's actually quite interesting. For example, my ground stroke, they all have a big take back. And if I put any force into my strokes, I can it's natural for me to grunt. I noticed that whenever I play doubles at night, no one grunts but me. There could be courts, two, three of them connected together and all four, you know, eight, twelve people on court. And it's just me and my voice echoing between this concrete jungle that is Singapore. On top of that, with this um, recording commentary to videos, I realized my voice is actually a higher pitch than I imagined. <laughs> so all things considered, I should just identify as a woman or at very least a WTA style tennis player. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just come to this new understanding about myself that I didn't know before. Whenever I watch YouTube tennis coaching videos, I actually like to model my serve after Serena Williams. I don't even like Serena. But she is 175 centimeter tall and weighs around 80 kilograms. That's almost my exact stat. If she can serve 200 km per hour, then it means I have room to improve my serve. And it also means that I have to stop bitching and moaning how my height is a limiting factor for my serve speed. Actually, the most inspiring thing that I read recently is that someone in the girls' Wimbledon who is barely 5 feet tall and 14 years old. She can serve a top speed of 116 miles per hour. That translates to um, almost touching 190 km per hour. So before I reach that speed, I should really just shut up about uh, how I'm too short to serve uh, as fast as a professional player. It's very clear that serve is all technique and it doesn't matter how thick your thigh is, how big your butt is, if you don't get a technique, it simply will not work. Speaking of things that doesn't work, a lot of people and I, we use this sports meetup app called Rovo. Its function is quite unique and it has options for you to set up a tennis game very efficiently. But the app is failing. The devs are not updating it. It doesn't even work when it rains because people want to check if their tennis game is cancelled and that creates more traffic and somehow that, that can crash their server. I actually quite like the app um, even though it doesn't work some of the times. Um, people call it a tennis tinder. I never use tinder so it's been a pretty magical experience for me. Like, I can just click on my phone a certain way, then I can just go out and play tennis game with people. With the app, it's, it's very easy to set up game with similar level players. 
for me, that's pretty great. It's like modern day magic. Extending that logic, if Rovo is tennis Tinder, then what I'm doing here on YouTube is tennis OnlyFans. Like, I'm not the best tennis player in the world. Like, far from it. <laughs> but why do people, why do people watch amateur videos? It's like there's some parasocial element in it. It's almost like you know the player, and for for some reason that intimacy makes it better. Even though the pro players are doing all sorts of stuff you didn't even know that human body are capable of, but for some reason, the amateur videos, <laughs> the amateur videos, are where it's at. There is this level of relatability and connection you just don't feel in professional productions. It's all quite strange, really. <laughs>